Hey there, welcome back to pre-shift beverage training. Uh, I'm still Dylan Higgins, I'm still the guy uh, who's going to be leading pre-shift. Uh, so, today I want to go over something that's uh, often referred to when you're uh, table side or when you're at a training or specifically a product training, um, and that is the concept of storytelling. So I'm going to go briefly over storytelling and then give you a few key phrases that you can use and that kind of thing in the hopes that that helps uh, sort of develop your wine sales presence. Um, so first things first, uh, storytelling is always like every time that I attended any brand management training or anything along those lines, people talk about how a story sells a bottle of wine. And that is absolutely true. I'm not going to dispute that. Um, the thing is, that's usually stated in a context to imply that you have to have some sort of insider knowledge about a very specific story regarding a winery in order to sell any of the wine at all. And that's that I do actually challenge, and that's patently false. So the, the truth is, you need to figure out what kind of story it is that your guest or customer or whomever wants to be told. And that's uh, that's where we come into the asking questions thing that we talked about before. Now, uh, I basically break them into three categories so far as the stories go. One category is the most uh, sort of just basic question and answer story. And usually that's, that's roughly something akin to um, I want a full-bodied red, and I want to pay eight bucks a glass for it. That story is pretty straightforward. That story is pretty easy to tell, and you're not going to spend a lot of time on it. And that's fine. Sometimes you just got to tell a quick story to get out of there. And you know, maybe you have on your list three different options that are, you know, maybe you have an eight-dollar Cabernet from California and an inexpensive Coderon that's a, a, on the fuller-bodied side, or something along those lines, and I, a, a Rosa de Montalcino that you guys got a killer deal on, or something along those lines, and you're able to you're able to give them a few options. Then you just have to tell a little bit more story about it from there. The second uh, is usually uh, like a contextual story, and I, I say that because there are some, some people want to come in, um, and they're very ex focused on their experience right now, not, and not everybody is going to be consistently in these categories, but sometimes you'll have a repeat guest who is always the kind of guy who just wants to come in and know what's going to pair with his uh, bouillabaisse. Okay. Uh, and then the next time he comes in, he has lamb. He wants something that'll pair with lamb. So in these contextual or experience-driven interactions, you're going to need to know what it is that they're, what they're having. But then you actually have to demonstrate some knowledge of the product as well by being able to explain how that pairs. Um, the next time we go through one of these, uh, I'll spend about 10 minutes describing uh, what structure is, how it works, um, and how aromatics give you a different set of explanation. Anyway, uh, so for right now, you would want to, you need to ask the questions that are necessary to be able to get to that answer. And anything beyond the conversation of how the structure and the aromatics of a wine pair with the food or are relevant to their celebration for the evening or, or whatever, anything beyond that is probably unnecessary. I personally have had to learn more about how to restrain myself than how to fully explain something. Um, I feel like I'm not the only one. Anyway, um, so you need to find out if that's if that's what we're dealing with. Are, are we looking at just a, a conversation about uh, what's going to pair well with uh, your, men, your meal tonight? Uh, or something that's going to make your wife happy for your anniversary? Whatever. Once you get, once you get the answer to that kind of uh, how they want their story to go, then you can tell them a story about... Um, how the muscadet has a, a fantastic minerality that pairs beautifully against your uh, mussels dish, or uh, the uh, lo 
love story, uh, sparkling, um, suave is a, a tale, uh, derived from the Romeo and Juliet stories of Verona, whatever, uh, whatever it is that's going on. If you have the story available, you can tell it. And then the third thing, and this is the more, this is sort of the more uncommon, um, and most challenging of the group, uh, and this is actually where those brand trainings come in handy, is the concept of a story that had to be told that is, <clears throat> pardon me, that is uh, somehow a greater explanation of what's going on at the vineyard or the winery, and in this case, someone really wants to be romanced and wined and dined, so to speak, uh, with the story of what's going on with the wine, then, then you do actually need to know some things about the winery or the vineyard or the winemaker or the, the, the region that it comes from. And sometimes all it takes is a story about, um, you know, what it is that makes <coughs> San Giovese from Chianti uh, more well-known answer or why the, the Black Rooster on the Chianti Classico DOCG labels exists. If you can tell that story confidently and at least somewhat accurately, uh, then then you're going to answer that question. Um, and again, uh, I'm not trying to take anything away from anybody who is trying to impart that information to you. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about those kind of things. But you have to know whether or not that's what your, your guest is actually after. So to really quickly, since I've got a couple minutes, really quickly piggyback off of the prior statement. Um, when you're discussing what a wine is and how it pairs with food or something along those lines, there are really two key elements that we look at when we're doing a, a double blind tasting or an assessment of a bottle of wine um, that help us get to that answer. And those two, those two key elements are an aromatic uh, investigation and a structural investigation and structure is literally the physical presence of the wine so when we talk about the structure of a wine we talk about the tannins we talk about uh, the alcohol the acidity and we talk about um, sugar so we really we really only talk about a few key components and the reason we only talk about a few key components is because everything else is aromatics um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% of what you perceive as a flavor is actually a, an aroma. And so because of that, we spend a lot of time discussing the aromatics to a bottle of wine without ever really getting into the structure of it and how it's going to play with food. Um, so tannins, really quickly, are uh, actually a natural defense system developed by plants. Uh, to give an astringency to their to their product, which makes it unpalatable. Um, in wine, we want some tannins, especially in red wines, to help mitigate a bunch of the other things that are going on. It gives balance. It allows the the wine to avoid oxidizing too quickly, and those kind of things. Because of that, tannins will be present. Um, sugar or sweetness and dryness are an opposite, an inverse relationship. The more sweetness you have, the less dry the wine is. I can't emphasize exactly how much we need to educate everyone around us about that. If a wine is sweet, it has sugar. If a wine smells sweet, that's an aromatic. And then alcohol is usually uh, a very important structural component because it, it offsets tannin to an extent. It offsets sweetness and fruitiness. Um, it it accentuates sweetness to an ex also to an extent. But at the end of the day, all these things comprise the actual physical structure of the wine as it as it interacts with your palate. And that's why it's important to be able to discuss those things intelligently because those will all impact how, what type of food it goes with. A full-bodied or high-alcohol red doesn't really go well with 
uh, super mineral lean high acid foods so you, you want to have that in the back of your mind for that story anyway um, we'll get into that greater detail later uh, hope all's well and uh, have a great shift